we're on La Redoute. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show, brought to you by Wiggle. This week we have for you the worst cycling kit ever and the longest time ever spent in a pair of cycling shorts by GCN presenter. Yeah, we have some groundbreaking tech with a new power meter and this is Matt's last GCN show. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that it's not just cycling shorts that are now fashionable, but according to Kanye West, the entire retro High Road Columbia kit as well. Yeah, he tweeted this, and judging by the sheer number of emojis, he feels pretty strongly about it, doesn't he? Yeah. There are 28 emojis, because we counted finishing on a skull and crossbones. Hmm. What does that actually mean, Si? I don't know, it's the monkey with his eyes covered that, I don't know what that meant. But that's mm. gonna be a good thing, isn't it? I don't know, 25 <laughs> flames is pretty good. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately for Mark Cavendish though, it appears he's given all of his away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, we also learned this week that it is possible to wear a pair of cycling shorts for 36 hours straight and not suffer any kind of health consequences, in the short term, at least. Did we now? Well, yeah, I did. I took one for the team. It was absolutely disgusting, but I basically had to ride all day, sleep in my cycling shorts, and then get up and ride the whole of the next day as well. Well, sorry, they're certainly not going to be a collector's item anytime soon, are they? No. Well, no, I don't think they are. And actually, they didn't even make it back into the country. God forbid. Going through Marrakesh Airport, all kinds of alarms got set off. Thank goodness for And the last thing I saw, they were being treated as a biohazard. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, saved. there we go. That's the last we'll see them. Uh, but as you've seen from the title and also from the introduction to the show, more important things at hand here. This is, of course, Matt's last GCN show. Over to you, Matt. Yeah, no, thanks, Si. Uh, after four and a half absolutely mind-blowingly amazing years, I mean, it has been, we say journey, but it has been, because we started off modestly, didn't we? Now we're kind of, we're doing this, and so many people seem to like what we do. It is, it's been an absolutely amazing, humbling few years. Uh, I've had the pleasure of working with some brilliant people, uh, both in front of the camera and behind the camera, uh, but most importantly, you know, seeing you guys out on the road, the viewers make GCN kind of what it is. So it's been insane. And I'll look back on this last four and a half years very, with a lot of fondness. Uh, but I'm going to move on to doing a bit more commentary. A lot of you know that I do commentary for Eurosports. So I'm going to do a bit more of that. Uh, so I'll be at the Giro this year doing commentary as well. So yeah, exciting times ahead, but I'll always look back with a lot of fondness. So thanks for being, you know, part of, part of what I've done. Be honest with us, when you were laying on the cobbles in Flanders having had your latest <laughs> fall, yeah. was it at that point that you thought commentary's where it's at in a booth? It, it was quite a sobering moment and you think you are quite right. I lay there and thought, that, firstly that hurt quite a lot. I thought, I'm nearly 50, a nice comfortable booth whittling on about cycling could be where it's at for me to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's really hard to know where to start with this news really. Uh, we've been thinking long and hard about it and we about a few highlights. Going back to some of the olden days, I do remember uh, at Paul Lock Hill in yep. Somerset, you coming up with the idea we should do what you shouldn't eat on a bike and we should do some rider impressions as well. <laughs> I don't know if I've admitted this to you before, but at the time I thought, what on earth am I doing with my life? <laughs> and you've got some of the worst ideas I've ever come across in is, my we, life. We go out on shoots, don't we? And we have scripts with a certain amount of videos we're gonna do. And that particular shoot, we'd already finished What Not To Eat. And I thought on the way back up to the top of the hill to film another video, why don't we do the rider impressions? And that that's where that one was born. But it just shows how much fun we do have. I mean, it is a privilege making these videos. It's the best, well, it's been the best job in the world. But I think looking back for me, I mean, Simon's reintroduction to GCN after a little break yourself was what not to wear. So your first yeah. video back out on the open road after being injured was wearing a pair of budgie smugglers on a bike. So I bet yeah. you nearly thought you were going to can it straight away as well, didn't you, to be honest with you? Well, yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was the fact that, yeah, having not ridden a bike for three months, was in a neck brace, I then had to take all my clothes off and ride my bike, which yeah, which was a bit strange, wasn't it? But just despite being effectively naked, that was a great shoot as well, yeah, wasn't that, it, really? That, that was a great uh, I think my, some of my highlights, the you doing cyclocross for the first time ever, despite having been ridden a bike for so long. I mean, that was utterly brilliant. Uh, not just you know the the sort of some of the more slapstick moments as well, but the fact that you fully went for it, full gas. You know, ended up doing a national trophy race. Uh, I thought that was great. Some of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, most of it. And then <laughs> yeah, uh, off. also. In more recent times, the Taiwan KOM Challenge, I don't know if yeah. we've spoken about that very much, uh, but that was an absolute epic. And we got, you know, we went 
pretty deep, didn't we? Yeah, that was proper. Yeah, I think there's, as you said, two and a half thousand videos or more. It's very difficult to pick out the best moments. So I don't think I'll ever be able to do that. I think once I think once I've, I've finished and I reflect back, more and more videos will keep popping up into the forefront of my mind and thinking that was brilliant. But no, Cyclocross was amazing. Our recent shoot uh, in Flanders doing yeah, the cobble videos was, great, was amazing. Apart from me laying it down, that was really cool. And also, yeah, top five climbs in Flanders in the Paris Bay. One of my recon, favorite videos. They were cool. But also having a few beers in the evening. Not that I always want to link my highlights <laughs> of life to beers in the evening, but um, no, there's definitely a real. That was a good laugh. I've also got to throw one more video in the mix. It was the one I did in. Uh, in Spain, in Marbella with, with Emma as well. That was amazing, that was an amazing ride. And I think, I like the videos the most when we actually ride our bikes, uh, because we've, we've had the privilege of riding our bikes in some of the most amazing places in the world, meeting some of the most incredible people. And by that, I generally mean you guys out there. So once again, uh, thanks very much. Yeah, now we haven't got beer, unfortunately, for this one, but we do have some yeah. champagne. Oh, cheers. Yeah, to celebrate. Only joking, oh, mate. Uh, celebrate yeah, four and a half amazing it? years and a giant cake. Look at the size of that. Yeah. Should we, should we pop this live? Come on. Although it's recorded, live, but live. live. All right, so you might have to speed this a little bit up, John, because uh, otherwise it will probably turn into a four yeah, or five mate. minute show. Uh, now, right. uh, Matt, it's not just champagne as well, actually. Oh. <laughs> There you go, mate. Always taking the mickey, aren't we? With love from us. Yeah. I don't even know what we're doing. No? They might to, be... I'll give you some money later. Yeah. It's all right, mate. They'll, they'll be, I will cherish these. Um, well, uh, we, we suggest you use them, actually. I think it was what we were going for. Uh, <laughs> I so, uh, leave them on the cobbles the other week. Yeah. I'm going to put my foot down. But uh, I'll aim this so... There's some kind of like soundproofing bits of polystyrene on the roof. So I'll aim for one of those rather than the lights. You look like you go for the light. Whoa! Oh, my God! Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Mind the electric! <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> Right. That, that was live! That was also, so we, fitting. We, we, that's the only one we got. Sorry, sorry. Oh, amazing. Uh, cool. okay. Well, you know what this means, though, don't you? We're well, well, leaving. Right. Thanks, mate. Well, we need somebody sure. to replace him, don't we? So, if any of you out there have got quite an infectious laughter, a healthy fear of logs, and an inability to clip in, then we'd very, love to hear from yeah, you. Very, very yeah. average bike handling skills as well you'll need, as well as a prerequisite. Uh, yeah. Oh, fuck! <laughs> To the future, guys, and it's been an absolute pleasure. What a ride. To you guys too. Cheers. Cheers. It's now time for cycling shorts. We're going to kick off this week's cycling shorts with rather disturbing images of, well, without doubt, in fact, the worst cycling shorts of all time. Check out this tweet from Scott McGrory. Hmm. I don't even know where to start. I think it's that. a skin suit, actually. Is it? Yeah. I think that's it's a skin suit. Yeah. Whatever it is, Terrifying. it's absolutely hideous. And uh, we have no idea what club or team name this is. If you know, let us know in the comment section just down below this If you video. dare to own up to it, of course. Uh, Scott Block, though, in reply to Scott McGrory, suggested maybe it was Team Nippo Mankini. Ooh. That was quite funny. <laughs> very good, very good. Very uh, good. Right, moving on now to uh, <clears throat> altogether more serious matters. Uh, news from the United Nations. A meeting of the General Assembly on the 12th of April in New York has yielded the news that the 3rd of June this year will be World Bicycle Day. Yeah. How cool is that? UN World Bicycle Day. Hurrah. Yeah, That's absolutely, what I say. yeah. That will be a day to celebrate the hum humble bicycle, in particular what it's given towards transport and what it's given towards leisure, but it'll particularly focus on, uh, on what it's offered towards sustainable development needs, basically. Yeah, it's really good news, isn't it? Yeah, it's fantastic, uh, we about here, time. Yeah, we here at GCN will, of course, be celebrating it on the 3rd of June, hopefully, with all of you as well. Absolutely. Uh, now, sticking with the theme of cycling's contribution to sustainable development, some good news from here in the UK, actually, from one of the big supermarket chains, Sainsbury's, who've just announced that they're going to be trialling deliveries by e-bike mm. in central London. Yeah, check it out, e-cargo bikes. How cool is that? Apparently they're gonna be able to tell which vehicle is suitable for which delivery and allocate it on that basis. Yeah, they won't be for two heavy deliveries. I mean, obviously they'll do something different for when Dan restocks his beer fridge, for example. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, like um, that now you leave, yeah, is it? Like an articulated been, lorry, perhaps, it's honest, or uh, it's been honest. A, a cargo ship? Yeah, yeah, yeah. moving on. Uh, from news of the future to a blast from the past, in fact, because Lance Armstrong has finally settled his lawsuit. Mm. Yep, he settled with the US government for a pretty cool $5 million, with $1.65 million going to Floyd Landis. Although, apparently, it wasn't an admission of liability by Armstrong, nor a concession by the United States. So. What exactly was it then? Good point. Yeah, not immediately clear, is it? Maybe hmm. some kind of charitable donation or both sides get to say that they've won? 
I don't know. Anyway, nevertheless, it is the third major lawsuit that Armstrong has settled since his admission of guilt in 2013. But despite all that, it's probably fair to assume that he still quids in at the end of the day, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah to keep it all right. Is. Right, whilst Asai was over in Morocco trying his hand at bike packing last week, seasoned veteran at the discipline, Sean Conway, was busy starting his record attempt to be the fastest person to cross Europe by bike. Yeah, at the moment he's around halfway through France and just ahead of the current record holder, James McLaren. Now, it's a big undertaking, isn't it? This is going to be completely self-supported and he's aiming to cover the 7,200 kilometres in only 25 days. Yeah, do you think the watch stops when his front wheel crosses the line, or when his beard crosses the I line. I reckon if he several kind of used minutes it, before did him. some product on his beard and kind of did that with it, and wrote, he'd probably be the beard. We well, could barely fit his beard in the GCN set when he was here. Yeah, could yeah. Be, it? it's, it's quite impressive, isn't it? Let's be honest. Click on my beard somewhere around here. Right then, from a giant beard to a more modest beard, mm. you might remember a few months back that former UCI president Brian Cookson had announced his plans of starting a new women's world tour team. Well, despite there being little news on the subject for the last few months, apparently the plans are still ongoing and actually they've managed to sign a couple of sponsors as well. Still yet to find their title sponsor, but things are still looking in the right direction. Yeah, and in addition to that, they've actually announced their charity partner, which will be World Basketball Relief, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. really cool, isn't it? Uh, okay, sticking with women's teams for just a few more moments, we would like to extend our best wishes and a big get well soon to Richard Steger. Uh, he is the mechanic at Team Bulls Dormans. And unfortunately, last week before Flesh Alone suffered a heart attack at the team hotel. Uh, thankfully, David Brailsford and the Team Sky medical team were on hand very quickly to resuscitate him. Uh, but yeah, all the best from us at GCN. Yeah. Now, we do unfortunately have to finish cycling short with some sad news. The owner of BMC, Andy Reese, an all-round cycling patriarch, you've got to say, unfortunately lost his battle with leukaemia last week. Yes, Reese was a huge supporter of cycling through BMC Racing and previous to that, Phonak. Now, he'll be sorely missed throughout the cycling industry and from all of us here at GCN, we'd like to pass on our condolences to his immediate family, friends and, of course, BMC Racing. Tech of the week now, and it warrants a trip to our workshop, I believe, because we have this, which is a new product that has just hit Kickstarter, and it is a new power meter. It's called IQ Squared, and the people behind it have asked us to take a look and then tell you about it. So here we go. There are two big things to tell you. Firstly, there's some pretty revolutionary technology inside this, and secondly, is the price. So. A single cider is just 149 euros. Dual sided is 249 euros. But apparently, if you get in early on Kickstarter, then it's 199 euros. Now, it is actually the first product to come from the design team behind it. You kind of know the drill by now. They are engineers, they are bike riders. They wanted to train with power, they were put off by the sometimes high prices. And so they looked to do something of their own, particularly because they wanted something that can swap between road bikes and mountain bikes. And when they actually looked into power meter technology, they felt that what was holding it back was the reliance on traditional strain gauges, which are admittedly now well established and quite old tech. And obviously they can and do work perfectly, but in order to get them to do so, you actually need to do quite a lot of extra work to compensate for the limitations, which is something that they wanted to avoid. So you will be asking, no doubt, what is exactly inside this? Thin film deposition technology. So in essence, a strain gauge has actually been chemically deposited directly onto the metal. So in this case, we've got a ceramic layer, just two microns thick, and that acts as an insulator for the Constantin alloy, which goes on top of it, which is 50 nanometers thick. And that is what acts like a normal strain gauge, basically. So as it deforms under stress, it changes the electronic resistance of a circuit, and that is literally how we measure the strain. Cool, huh? You still there? Good, okay, that was the geeky bit out of the way. How does it work then? Right, it screws directly into your cranks, and then your pedal screws directly into the power meter, meaning that you could use any pedals or any cranks. Although in use, we found that you do need a pedal that's got flats for a spanner or a wrench. It does add to your Q factor 
by 16 millimeters on each side of the pedal. And we put that to IQ squared and they recognize that that may well put some people off. So they've developed custom titanium axles fitted into Shimano pedals and they have those available to offset that Q factor. And as an added bonus, that saves you 20 grams per pedal, which almost completely offsets the 29.7 grams of your power meter. As if you would notice, 29.7 grams. But there we go. Now, it transmits via Bluetooth or AMP Plus, apparently, and the battery is a replaceable CR2032 that fits in there. And they say it lasts between 200 and 300 hours of riding. Now the sample rate is quite astonishing at 2,000 times per second, but they've said they are actually looking at modifying the circuitry to reduce that slightly, which would therefore further improve the battery life. So there we go then. If you are interested, head over to Kickstarter and have a look. Really interesting bit of tech there. You can't get away from the Q factor, but I raised the issue with the designer and he referenced a whole load of studies that show that actually Q factor should be another kind of metric that you assess when you're getting a bike fit and it oh, should good. be changed according to individuals. Hmm. And more importantly, that narrower is not necessarily better. Far from it, in fact. Hmm. So Apparently so you need to get wider as you get older as well. Huh, what are you looking at me for? It's your bit next. Anyway, there's been some really cool new tech releases from Zip and from Quark. So yeah, should we start with Zip, shall we? Yeah. New handlebars, first of all. So they've got a revised Service Course SL80 Ergo and a revised Service Course 80 Ergo. And they say they've taken inspiration from mountain bikes and what they've done is introduce a back sweep to the top section of the handlebars, just three degrees, but it puts your hands in a noticeably more comfortable natural position. And good for you, Lordy, keeps your elbows tucked in. Oh, nice and tight. Happy yeah. days. Yeah, yeah. Good for you, then, for $110 for the SLs and just $55 for the standard service course. That sounds like good value. I've always thought aluminium handlebars are great value, but yeah, yeah. 55 bucks, mm, brilliant. Uh, they've also got some new wheels in the form of a tubular version of their Wavy 454 NSWs, which we've seen Team Katusha using, in fact, since last summer, and a new tyre as well, the Tangente R25, which uses the tread pattern the R28. Yeah, can I say that? I'm most excited about the new Firecrest 303 tubulars because they feature tech that's trickled down directly from the top flight NSW range. So the rim brake version has now got that showstopper brake tracks. So that's kind of basically like the little grooves that are cut into it to improve braking performance in the wet. And they've also got revised dimple patterns, so again, taken from the NSWs. Trickle it's great. Down tech. Mm -hmm. Gotta love trickle down. God, I love a bit of trickle down tech. Yeah. But I hear you ask, what about Quark? Well, Quark have given us these, the tyre whiz. Whoa. Basically, they sit on your valves and give you real-time tyre pressures. Now, the data is collected every second. They only add 10 grams per wheel, and based on the data that's been collected, they'll give you your optimum tyre pressure. That's How bonkers, cool isn't is that? it? Yeah. Tyre whiz. One for the geeks out there, for sure, but let's stress that actually there's some serious gains to be made, aren't there? Definitely. From yeah. nailing your tyre pressure and also being prepared to change it according to the conditions and the road surface that you're riding on. Combine that with your Q factor, I tell you what. It's hope for you yet, mate. Well, as you say, it's probably worth a comeback because that's, you know, significant enough to offset the... <clears throat> yeah, just leave it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> leave it. <laughs> It's the GCN Wiggle of Fortune Ooh, now. Yeah. No doubt you all know the score, but just to remind you, there are five prizes up for grabs. Four Wiggle vouchers, ranging from £25 from prize four, up to £150 of Wiggle vouchers for prize one, plus that solitary beer, which I'm yet to win. And do you know what? Given what's happened this week, yeah. if I do win the beer this time around... You're gonna give it to me? No, I'll share it. I sh so share it. I'll give some to you. I'll give some to you. I will share it with you, Sai, but I know you're gluten intolerant. There's a gluten free one in there, Dan. Don't worry, you can share that with me. Okay. Oh, yeah. This week's contestant then is Lisa Jackson from the USA. You ready? Oh, you're going to do the other across for you. Can I do it again? Yep. Is that all right? Three, two, one. Come on up. then, we're all watching the beer, we're watching the beer. Ooh, that beer it's it's not again. looking too bad. I think it's it looking is good. It's looking good. It's looking good. Oh, come on. Come on! It's gonna be the beer. Oh no! Oh, it's going for the little bit. Slip. Congratulations, oh. though, Lisa. Oh, that well. is twenty-five pounds that you've just won yourself. Uh, make sure you get in touch. Let us know what you are going to spend it on. Yep. Mate, I'm really sorry for you. Maybe yeah. you could buy me a beer. If that's all right. I'm really struggling this to hide my wiggle. disappointment. I can almost mm. taste the beer. 
Well, let's just go for one. See anyway, in a moment. Yeah. Don't forget that you can put yourself forward to be a contestant for next week's show by following the link in the description below. That rhymed, didn't it? Mm. I thought you were going to get that, mate. I genuinely mm. thought that you had that in the bag. Last week's Flesh Roland and the Age Best on the Age mark the end of the spring classic season and potentially the end of the dominance of Alejandro Valverde oh. because for the first time in five years, he didn't win either. No. That said, you wouldn't bet against him coming back in 12 months' time and winning no, both I'm of them. I'm not going to bet against him. Gold as well. Uh, congratulations, though, go to Julian Alaphilippe and Bob Jungles, who won Flesh Wallon and Liège Baston Liège, respectively, in quite some style. Yeah, and what about Anna van der Breggen? Mm. She won her fourth consecutive Flesh Wallon, and also she took the second ever edition of Liège Baston Liège for women as well, winning the same race 12 months previously. Yeah, Anna van der Breggen, she's absolutely on fire at the moment, but you can get a lot more, more detailed look at all the racing of last week in the Race Report show, starring yeah. Dan Lloyd, yeah. Yeah, make sure you yeah. check that out. That's good uh, our attentions now, of course, though, will start to turn to the Giro d'Italia, oh. which, as you well know, starts in Jerusalem <laughs> next Friday. Yeah, and as ever, it has been super interesting to track the performance of big favourites, hasn't it? Chris Froome was in action at Tour of the Alps last week, where he could only finish fourth, or maybe where he finished fourth. Is it cause for concern? Well, not necessarily if you're going on last year where he hadn't won a race before the Tour de France, but you've got to think, haven't you? That lad's got the weight of the world on his shoulders. It can't it's, be, it's got uh, to have affected him, surely. Yeah, it can't be easy being Chris Froome right now, can it? But it was only 16 seconds adrift of Thibaut Pinot, True. who won the Tour of the Alps, and he's another rider, of course, that is targeting the Giro d'Italia after finishing fourth place last year. But what about Tom de Moulin? He's had a very difficult start to the year, but there was glimpses of form. He's very aggressive in the age, based on the age. But interestingly, um, he's only going to have 12 days racing yeah. in his legs before the Giro. And you might be thinking, well, is he going to go be, look, look at being fresh and doing a Giro Tour double? But when you look back at his programme, it's exactly the same as it was last year, save for the fact, of course, he crashed out of Torino Adriatico. Yeah, it's interesting though, isn't it? Just mm. 12 days of racing, you would never have heard of that for someone targeting a Grand Tour a few years ago. How do you think his uh, tummy is this year? He's, he's avoiding certain foods. They've, he's had undergone some tests and they've identified the problem. So he's going to steer clear of, I think, fructose and stuff like that. There's a couple of things he can remove from the diet fructose and they think and lactose, yeah. that he won't actually be in that sort of problem again. So yeah, there they've we worked go. on it, yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, we've actually just been to a nice Italian restaurant in Bath to film our Giro d'Italia preview. Uh, looking glorious, I think you might agree, in our brand new pink special edition t-shirts, which are already available at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. Before we get on to the lucky winners of last week's giveaway, which was the SIS Endurance Bundle, let's announce this week's giveaway, where six lucky winners will receive a prize from our friends at Park Tools. Nice. Each yeah. winner will firstly get a TW 5.2 small torque wrench and the accompanying SBS 1.2 socket set. Amazing. That is pretty cool. But the aforementioned winners of the SES Endurance Bundle are as follows. Drum roll please, chaps. First up, we have Warren Consalves from India. Congratulations, Warren. Second, we have Ron Shulden from the United States of America. So well done, Ron. Ronnie. Next up from Australia, Matthew van der Vliet. I think I got that right. And finally, Lindsay Bruce from the United Kingdom. Well done, you guys. We'll be in touch and get them off to you. Yeah. yeah, and if you want to get involved in that park tour competition, you know what to do. The entry form link is down in the description beneath this video. It's time now for hack forward slash bodge of the week. And we have got some pearlers this week, starting with this from Brent Chapel. Look at that. Crumbs. My goodness, that must be a pan in the arse, that bike. What how much dough it cost? Boom! Hey! hey. Well, it took us a minute to come up with that. Didn't we? Didn't we? Right. Next to be up. fair, though, crumbs is the answer to this one as well. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, oh from my Glenn Cooksley. So, so that's a tennis ball or something. As a saddle? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Better oh than the actual God. seat pin, but well, marginally. marginally. yeah, you got to clench pretty hard for that, haven't you, really? Heck. Uh, yeah. In fact, I dread to think. Let's you move, let's move what, on, Tony. You've got balls to ride that, haven't you? Hey! Oh, yeah, next up. <laughs> yeah. uh, next up on Facebook Messenger from Jonathan Wells. Uh, here's a method of preventing valves rattling inside carbon rims. Found an old V-brake gator does the job perfectly. And that looks far better than the elastic band we had. Neat, yeah, that is a good hack. Does look pretty pro. That, Can you think it? of a pun? No. No, I think we no. should very much leave the puns right four, now. It's four puns. Oh, is, four puns too many, that. really. I think. Next one, we've got this uh, sent in from uh, one of our favourite pros, Luis Lemus, uh, who has sent in this, which is an old coffee sack 
which is upholstered a saddle, and then matching hipster handlebar tape, which is some kind of like twine. Tell you what, it's got a lovely kind of natural, kind of earthy feel about it. it doesn't really. it just? I yeah. tell you what, Tony Martin would kill for that saddle. I tell you what, yeah, there's no He'd way you're it, slipping anywhere no, on that. You're not going anywhere. You but, put it, like, actually, your chamois might actually catch fire. Yeah, possibly not so good in the wet. No, I'd argue. No. Uh, you know, coffee bag uh, and you know. Possibly a bit abrasive. Yeah. yeah a Made uh, light work in shorts. Anyway, thanks, Lewis, for sending no that No strings one. attached. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Show. Next Can't up from up. Justin Hardwick on Twitter, we have this. Whoa. Good lord. That oh, would be quite comfortable over Paris Roubaix, wouldn't it? Paris. I tell you what that interests me the most, apart from the enormous headlight, is mm. the fact that the the rust on the lever hoods is. It's so it's been there for so long. It's actually providing its own sort of cushioning. Have you seen it? Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? It's like it's some kind of algal bloom. Isn't yeah, it? weird that they haven't got any padding the on the uh, on the bars where you actually need it when you're braking. Exactly. But, you know, anyway, it's probably the thing that you've got to reach the brake levers. Uh, how about this though? Whoa. Is that a hack or is that just? A homemade bike. Well, First stop. A homemade bike. Spotted by Ricky Ricky Deary, uh, who sent it to us on Twitter. Apparently, it was outside the Bristol Biscope, Bespoke Bike Show. Yeah, John was there, wasn't he, the other day? I mean, I didn't make it what. inside the show for some reason. No, it's no. not as kind of like perhaps as refined as some of the tech that was inside the show. I wonder if it's, a, it's like an IKEA flat pack bike by the looks of it. But it's it's. I mean, yeah. Sorry, we, we dwelled on that one because we we're all trying to think of a pun, weren't we? No puns. No. Not right, so John Bentley on Twitter, uh, he has 3D printed this little tool which helps him to correctly space his brake blocks away from his carbon rim. It's probably not essential, it's not I'd essential. argue. It's a like superfluous, you, isn't it? You know, setting up road brakes is one of the those blessedly easy oh, jobs. To get for me, right. I can just about do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gadgets and we've probably had fun. very few essential hacks and bodges over the last few years on the show, but uh, I, I personally quite liked it. Mm. Well, fair enough. There we go. Then it's a hack from Dan. <laughs> yeah, well, it's right. certainly not a bodge. No, I would never no, say that. I'm just hack. wondering whether you know. Might print Your it. problem with that is that you couldn't think of a pun for a 3D printed brake tool, could you? Uh, anyway, hashtag GCN hack is the hashtag that you can use on social media to send in your hacks and bodges. No, I can't think of one. No, what can I? I hope it doesn't break. That's one of the best hacks I've Oh my played, god, he's <laughs> nailed it right at the end. Pulled it out of the bag. <laughs> Caption competition, and last week's photo was this one of Rigoberto Uran hitting the deck at the Amstel Gold Race. Uh, we have a winner, Matt. Do you want to announce who that is? Oh, it's a pretty good one, actually. Uh, you got 12 likes, indicating how good it is. Uh, this is from Ed Markey. It's pronounced Uran, as in you ran me over. Yeah, oh, that I is like well that. deserved. That is a good solid. We, we couldn't caption. come up with one, could we? Well, yours no. was actually quite poor, wasn't it? Very, to very that. poor. Uh, again, touch. Well, you Ed just on... wait till this week, mate. We're going to knock it out of the park. Get good. in touch yeah. for your Camelback water bottle, Ed, and uh, do that on Facebook with your address, and we'll get that sent out to you. All right, then. What is this week's caption photo? It is this one of Bob Youngles on the podium of Liège Bastogne Liège. Come on, so I take it away, mate. Can I? Do you mind? Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, guys, I normally wait till after the podium before I have a joint. <laughs> there you go, isn't it, really? Ah. That's actually pretty good, actually, Si. Yeah. Hold on, mate. No. There you go. Oh, Comment mate, of the week. Thank you very much. Are you allowed to give yeah, me yeah, some? Yeah, I'm not really allowed no, to. Uh, in a minute, uh, just sure. I was going to say, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, leave your captions in the comment section just down below. Thanks for centralising the cake at you. It's all mm -hmm. about continuity, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Should we talk about what's on the channel this week? Mm -hmm. Yes. On Wednesday, we've got how not to be antisocial when on a group ride. Intervals are often on the training plan because they're just so effective. And if you've got a long climb on a group ride, it's a great place to put in a structured session. Because often, everybody just rides their own pace on a climb anyway. And in fact, sometimes, the slow, fast, slow of intervals is actually no quicker than just riding at a steady pace. So, get your intervals in, meet up with your ride buddies at the top of the hill, and carry on for a nice steady ride. Everyone's happy. And on Thursday, we've got a bit of a linguistic lesson for you, because oh, yeah? I present a show called The Top 14 Italian Cycling Phrases and Words to help you a little bit ahead of the Giro d'Italia. Sorry, how do you pronounce these phrases? We have a special Italian person in the <laughs> okay, right. I also so do my own pronunciations as well, and you can have a go yourself. So check it out, it should be a bit of fun. <laughs> you know the yeah, first two be. Italian phrases that I learned while cycling? They're probably swearing uh, on them. Piano and spingere, which mean go easy and please push me. <laughs> really right. useful yeah, when definitely. I was racing around the roads of Italy. Uh, okay, Friday is another edition of Ask GCN. I think don't forget the hashtag is talkback if you'd like to get a question answered this week. And then on Saturday, Emma's back. 
punishing us all again with her latest commuter training suggestion. Oof, and it's all commute about. Hard. Yeah, she does. Uh, it's all about fasted training this week. Mm. Oh, crikey. That really is tough. Uh, right, Sunday, again, it's Emma actually. Uh, she has apparently never had a bike fit in wow. her whole career. But she's getting one this week, and the video is going to be out on Sunday, so that's going to be super interesting, isn't it? And then Monday, of course, as we've already said, it is the GCN Cycling Race News Show. And on Tuesday... Right back here. Some of us are back in the set. It is time now for Extreme Corner as we're getting towards the end of the GCN show, I'm afraid. This week we've got Ludo May and, uh, well, check it out. It's on a road bike. Should we check he is. Well, let's, let's press play. Let's see what happens. Play. Smooth. Whoa. Silky skills. Whoa. Not, not massively not nice, extreme, is, is he? Whoa. No. Still, I couldn't do it. Wow. No. I, oh, well. Whoa. Yeah, maybe. Whoa. Oh! That's oh. some dismount, wasn't it? Ooh. Oh! Oh! I didn't, I didn't expect that. That's the first time that we've. <laughs> oh my! Like, thank you for smiling. That was. That was some face plant, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. There was me thinking, well, that's not very extreme. We'll no. have to find something better. It's it wasn't down on Mountain Bike World Cup this weekend, like, after all. Pony corner, but then it's extreme at the end, wasn't it? Mm. Oh. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you have, give us a thumbs up down below. Uh, do you well, have I think you Sorry, we've got to say it should be a big thumbs up. For Matt, yeah, no, shouldn't it really? Yeah. No, so, uh, as I said before, it's been an absolute pleasure, and um, I'll be around. I'll be in and around. I'm staying. You know, I'm gonna, I'll be. I'm not gonna be far away. So I'll probably bump into you guys on the road. <laughs> and, uh, I might go for a beer every now and again with you guys. But, okay, uh, one in a minute. Thanks, but hot yeah, on the heels of our bottom Thanks for watching. Yeah, you've just been brilliant. So Make sure you. you let us know in the comment section as well as giving Matt a big thumbs up. Also, uh, what your favourite Matt moments have been on the channel over the yeah, last years? Very do. interesting to, to to read those, and also maybe we can throw them onto one big compilation. Cool. Yeah, we'll let's cool, do that. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't yet, though, watched Matt's top five crashes. Hey, down here. Yeah. <laughs>